Hi everyone, welcome to my next Monday Bible. My guest of today is Peter Słowiński, research fellow at Max Planck Institute for Innovation and Competition and expert on AI and patent law. Peter, great you are here. Thank you for the invitation, Michal. Yeah, we are going to discuss uh, AI and patents and uh, links between these two matters. Firstly, I would like to ask you that considering the evolving capabilities of AI, there has been a controversy over uh, whether AI systems uh, can or should be recognized as inventors uh, in patent applications. What do you think? Yes, yeah, so this was actually, or still is, a debate that we're having worldwide. And so far, there's just one decision from Australia where they decided that an AI system can be an inventor. All other decisions were against this. And for me, the question is, what is an inventor? An inventor is someone who, to some degree, autonomously decides to come up with an idea to, to invent something and AI is not there yet. So there will probably be a point in time when AI will wake up in the morning and decide, okay, there's a problem out there either for humankind or for fellow AIs. And then the AI will come up with a solution to this problem. And then when it will be that autonomously, I guess we will need to accept that it's an inventor. But so far, there's a lot of human intervention still going on every time someone uses AI to make an invention. So it's still a tool and not an inventor, in my opinion. So even if I prompt just two words and get a full invention, what do you think about it, about the capability of uh, uh, changing prompts to a very complicated solutions? Nowadays, you need uh, much, much more still to come up with solutions. And also what we should not forget is how much work there is in the background, basically preparing the AI to come up with the invention. So we should, we should distinguish. On the one hand, we have things like ChatGPT that is basically generating text based on large amounts of text it has and basically trying to predict what we want to hear, what the result should be. And on the other hand, when we talk about inventions, it's much more complex and much more data and information has to go into this before you can type in the prompts, basically. So um, there is one example that's quite, uh, quite interesting. NASA, um, the American um, Space Agency, they wanted to come up with a new antenna for the satellites. Mm -hmm. And they used an AI, an evolutionary algorithmic based AI to come up with a solution. And once they hit start, the AI came up with a solution quite fast. And it is a design for an antenna that no human being could have come up with. It's really something very different from what was there in the past. But NASA worked for weeks before that to set up the AI in a way that the AI could come up with a solution. So it may be just the two word prompt in the end, but there's a lot of work, human work going into this before the AI can do anything. And so this is why I'm not sure whether the AI is really that autonomous as some people claim it is. Okay. And uh, do you think that the use of AI changes or challenges the conventional criteria of novelty or inventing step uh, that uh, we should change amend patent laws that we have so far? Mm -hmm. Well, so it definitely does. It will make an impact on what we see when it comes to novelty, but even more to inventive step. So for everyone out there who don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about novelty and inventive step is to get a patent, basically the idea must be new. So nothing like this can be out there. So this is the, the first thing. And then we have something in, that we call inventive step, which means it must not be obvious in light of what was already out there, because we don't want to give protection for 20 years for something that anyone can come up with. And so we ask ourselves, okay, if someone working in the field would have thought, okay, this is pretty obvious to go basically the next step and come up with this new thing, then this is obvious and therefore not patentable. And if it's something where you look at it and you think, okay, this is quite quite creative, actually, this is something that is not straightforward for experts in the field, then we call this non-obvious and we grant a patent. And of course, when you use AI, AI to some extent can combine information in a different way and AI can therefore piece together data, information from various areas and therefore come up with new results that humans would think, well, this is not, not really obvious, but for the AI, it's a piece of cake, basically, to mm -hmm. come up with that. But then the question is not so much, is it obvious for the AI or not, but is it obvious for the human being to use AI as a tool to come up with this new invention, basically? And there again, we are getting there. We're getting quite close. In the past, most AI tools used to invent things 
we are basically set up for this single purpose. So like NASA, they programmed their own evolutionary algorithm based AI to find this new concept design for this antenna because you need specific data to come up with it. So it's probably still not that obvious to use AI for some tools. It requires a lot of money, a lot of resources, but we know that already many pharmaceutical companies are using AI to come up with new protein structures, with new drugs. And so over time, there will be probably AI tools out there, just like microscopes in the past, when everyone will say, okay, it's quite obvious to use AI and come up with something new. And if then it's just basically one click or a quick prompt away, this new idea, then we will probably have to not change the law really, but our perception of what is obvious would change because uh, it would be obvious to use this tool. And for this tool, it would be easy to come up with the end result. And this okay. may mean that we will grant, not grant patents on certain things that we grant patents for right now, but this doesn't have to be a bad thing. Who says that we need to grant patents? Maybe some branches of business uh, do. Yes, uh, probably. Okay, well, I, I would like to discuss one more thing. In Europe, on trusting to US approach, we cannot patent software. But uh, do you think, uh, or under what circumstances, AI innovations are patentable in, in Europe? I'm glad that you're mentioning this because this is something that people actually believe, even lawyers think that you cannot patent software, which is not the case in Europe. You can patent software in Europe. The European Patent Convention says you cannot patent a computer program as such, which means if you just have the code for an ordinary software running on a computer, you cannot patent this. But as soon as you have some kind of technical effect, which means interaction with the outside world, you can patent this software as part of something more. So let me give you an example. If you take a look at AI being used for autonomous driving, the AI is stealing the car. It has a technical effect because of the AI, because of the software, the car is driving. The car is recognizing human beings in the way, braking, um, doing things like this. Such an AI, you can patent. You can get patent protection for this one. Okay, really interesting. So looking forward the future, how do you anticipate AI's role and humans' role in, in this process? How it will evolve? Will there be any space for human left? I think so. Um, I definitely think so. Because still, at least for the next decade or something like this, those AI tools that are really used to invent something need a lot of human input still. Um, you have to set the parameters, you have to know and understand what you want as a result and um, define what you want, basically. So um, AI is not, not going to solve any problems by itself in the near future. So this is the one thing. The other thing is that AI will be able to speed up the process very, very much. And when you look, for example, at finding new drugs in the past, finding the right compound, the right chemical compound for a new drug took a lot of time. Right now, this can be shortened down to a large extent by the use of AI. And in the past also, we said we need really not just 20 years, but maybe even longer protection for pharmaceutical compounds because it's so complicated to come up with the new stuff. And if this, if we can speed up this process, then we probably will not need so much patent protection anymore. So basically the term of protection may need to be shortened. It will probably not be because we never ever, once we granted a term of protection, shortened this in the past. But in this respect, it will have some influence. And as I said, when it comes to obviousness, we will see changes. The big elephant in the room is just, okay, how to prove or how to see that AI was really used or how to see and prove that it's obvious to use AI. So this is this is the, the other question. But we will see influence on this. The way that ChatGPT or DALI are right now influencing copyright, we will see such influences in patent law in the next next years. Okay, great. So we have space for people and we have fantastic tool and this is good hint for, for future. I yes, think. definitely. Thank you for, for this discussion. It was extremely interesting. Thank you for the invitation.